Hey Five Forks, this is Pastor Sean. Well, that's not the 2020 we expected, and it kind of makes me wonder what 2021 has in store. But honestly, even with all that happened, I have to say that for me, 2020 was filled with some pretty important reminders. You know, a reminder that church isn't simply that one hour on a Sunday morning, or the church isn't simply the building. Walking with Jesus is more than three songs and a sermon. Also had some really good uh, reminders personally about spending time with my family and my kids, just laughing and playing together. All right, a little bit about my ministry time in 2020. And of course, for me, the most significant area of my time is actually spent in preparation for preaching. Reading and writing and thinking and pondering finding illustrations, telling embarrassing stories about me and my family. And so real quick, just to jog your memory, if you paid attention at all on Sunday mornings, here are some of the things that you should have learned in our messages in 2020. Remember we started the year, month of January, with a series called Building Community? We spent four weeks talking about the importance of building community life through worshiping together, eating, working, playing together. But because God has a sense of humor, after spending the month of January talking about the importance of our church community life, we were hit with a global pandemic and forced to spend months apart, social distancing and learning how to do church and build community while we were separated from one another. That was hard and perhaps proving to us the importance of church community life. Following our series on building community, we then tackled the Old Testament. That's right, the whole thing in five weeks. You know, the Old Testament is probably the most misunderstood portion of the Bible. Many people ignore or avoid it because they just don't know what to do with it. It doesn't make sense. It's a little weird. It's boring. And so we took some time to just try and understand the big picture story and concepts that are found in the Old Testament. And then over the summer, we actually stuck with the Old Testament, and we studied one of the most quoted passages in the Bible, by the Bible, from Exodus 34. We learned that God has a name. Remember, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. I even had you all trying to memorize these few verses. Can you still quote the whole thing? And then in the fall, we had this really challenging series called Fatal. We talked about eight vices that can be fatal to following Jesus, sloth, Envy, deceit, anger, pride, lust, gluttony, greed. You know, the church, we tend to be good at calling out big sins in others like murder and adultery, but it's usually these small vices creeping around our own hearts that are pulling us away from Jesus. I suspect we'd be better off working on these vices in our own lives than calling out the sin that we see in others. And then, of course, to finish up the year, our Advent Sermon Series. Looking at the Christmas story, through the eyes of those who were present 2,000 years ago when God became a man. Joseph and Simeon, the shepherds, Mary, the wise men. You know, sometimes the Christmas story just gets lumped into the magic of the season and it loses some of its realness. Seeing the story through the eyes of these real life folks though helps to bring the story back to reality in our own lives. Of course, through all of the series and the sermons, the biggest adjustment in 2020 for me was learning to preach to a quiet and empty room, which isn't easy. But I think I did learn, and I hope you did more than ever, once again following Jesus and learning about Jesus. It isn't mostly about sitting in a service on a Sunday morning. It's actually about living our lives with Jesus every moment of every day, and that can happen and should happen, whether we are in person, virtual, or any other mode of learning about Jesus. What a really good reminder for me, and I hope for you as well. A secondary area of ministry responsibility for me is with our connection ministry. Every week at Five Forks, at least almost every week, we have new people walking through our doors or tuning in to our live stream services. And of course, of course, the goal is to connect with these folks and create a warm and welcoming environment for our guests. This past year, COVID made our connect opportunities a little more difficult. We did hold a gathering though in early November And you should know, we had about 35 folks in attendance, most of whom were new to Five Forks in 2020 or the end of the the year before. I just want to say a big thank you also to an incredible group of Connect Ministry volunteers who give time regularly on Sunday mornings. 
often standing out in the cold or at the doors, coming to services early or leaving services late just to help make Five Forks a warm, friendly, and welcoming place. And so thank you to all those volunteers. Well, that's it for today. I have a few more details in my written report, which you can find in our annual council book. I hope your 2021 is off to a great start, and I look forward to seeing you all hopefully sometime soon.